Hi, this is Tara Cap with DinCloud. I would like to thank you and welcome you to our webinar, Surviving Disasters by Leveraging the Cloud. Mark Gerke, our Cloud Solutions Specialist, will shed light on various disasters that can cause outages, their impact on businesses, and the cost associated with it. Mark will further elaborate on how businesses can protect themselves, reduce the impact of these outages, and why they should consider Cloud Solutions and DinCloud for their disaster recovery strategy. Without further delay, here's Mark Gerke. Mark, please take it away. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Tara. Uh, welcome to today's webinar, Surviving Disasters by Leveraging the Cloud. My name is Mark Gerke, Cloud Solutions Specialist with DinCloud. So let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to cover today is, you know, what are the typical disasters that cause outages? What's the impact on businesses and, you know, costs associated with that? You know, how to protect and reduce the impact of the of outages, you know, how the cloud can help for you know, protecting against outages and you know business continuity and disaster recovery. You know, why would you want to consider DIN Cloud? And then at the end we'll have some Q and A. You know, everyone is muted. So if you have any questions, please enter them in the chat chat box and we'll cover them at the end of the presentation. So, you know, everybody I think everybody's aware of the typical you know, disasters that, you know, hit North America or the United States, we we got a little bit of everything. We've got tornadoes hurricanes, floods, wildfires, severe weather. So let's kind of take a look and see what, you know, what are those costs? Well, 2017 was a busy year. We had three major hurricanes. You know, NOAA estimates the cost going to be somewhere around $400 billion. You know, we've got wildfires and floods. The California wildfires alone, NOAA estimates $65 billion in costs. Uh, tornadoes, approximately 1,400 tornadoes last year, about $6 billion in costs. You know, not only are there natural disasters that can cause outages, there's system failures. There's cyber terrorism, hacking or theft. There's ransomware. There's virus and malware in infections. There's human errors, intentional and unintentional. Obviously, there's lightning, there's earthquakes, there's fires, there's power outages, there's, you know, terrorism, et cetera. So there's a lot of things that can cause, you know, disasters. And if you have to actually look at some of the statistics, most outages are caused by, you know, software failures, hardware failures, human errors. And if you've got revenue generating applications, such as in bulk brokerage, banking, credit cards, you know, those can cost you millions of dollars per hour um, you know, when you experience an outage. Uh, you know, not only, you know, ransomware is on the rise. It's up 15 times in the last two years. You know, ransomware as a service is on the way up. There's software tools that anybody can create ransomware and distribute. Um, so ransomware is certainly on the rise. And, you know, some other interesting t statistics, you know, 52% of small businesses, you know, say it's going to take at least three months to recover. You know, businesses that don't recover within a short period of time, 25% of them go out of business. So, you know, how can you protect yourself and reduce the impact of outages on your business? Well, there's a number of different ways. Well, we'll, we'll kind of drill down on each of these. There's, you know, standalone cloud storage. There's cloud storage with a warm site. Um, there's local backups with off-site replication. There's high availability solutions for those revenue generating and mission critical applications that auto fail over and don't go down. And then you can also look at the cloud for a hosted solution that includes backup and business continuity and disaster recovery. So let's kind of take a look at, you know, when you're deciding what technology or what solutions to implement, you really need to look at your applications and determine, you know, what is my recovery point objective and recovery time objectives, meaning recovery point objective, how much data can I afford to lose? And recovery time objective, how long is it gonna take me to get back in business? So what, typically what we'll do is we'll go through an assessment of customers' applications, determine what are tier one or mission critical applications, what are tier two and what are tier three applications. And then we'll design solutions accordingly. But let's kind of take a look at some of the options. So option one, you've got cloud storage. I think everybody's familiar with these types, Dropbox, OneDrive, Gmail, Box, et cetera. Um, they're typically S3 compatible. Um, there's an agent or some software that gets installed on the server or the workstation. Uh, as, as you change files on that server workstation, it replicates to the cloud. So you have a copy locally, you have a copy in the cloud. Um, that's your lowest cost. Uh, entry into off-site backup. Recovery times are longer. You've got to download the files. 
uh, to recover. Uh, but again, very cost effective, very easy to do. At minimum, everybody should be doing this. Um, then you can also look at you know leveraging cloud storage with warm site, meaning you're taking those files and you know, applications and servers and workstations and you're backing those up um, to the cloud you're typically using agent-based solutions or if you're in a virtual environment solutions like veeam offer agentless based solutions where they're backing up or uh, replicating at the hypervisor layer but with the warm site what we're suggesting here is you're going to have a firewall set up you know at the cloud provider so all the networks and networking is in place you have an ipsec vpn tunnel that's running all the time for not for connectivity that's kind of the lowest level of warm site you can take it a step further and have an active directory server Server that's replicating with an AD server on premise. So if you do need to fail over, all the user information is there. Then you can even take that, uh, you know, one step further. And if you've got, you know, file servers or databases, you can replicate those as well. So in the event of a disaster, your data is there. You, um, your user authentication information there is there. The connectivity is there. You know, these are. This is typically going to provide you with a a slightly higher cost, but a much shorter recovery time. So this might be your, you know, your you know, level two type applications, or even your level one applications that you can afford, you know, a few hours of recovery time. Um, you can also, you know, do the same concept where you're backing up to the cloud with, you know, either cold site or warm site, but you're also doing a local backup. Again, this is typically an agent base for physical servers, agentless based solutions for virtual servers. Um, you're, you're backing up locally, taking those local backups, replicating them to the cloud. In the event of a disaster, you can pull those files down from the cloud or you can recover in the cloud. Um, rec recovery times are reduced depending on, you know, if you have that warm site set up at the uh, cloud vendors or not. And then you can also look at, you know, for mission critical tier one applications that you don't want to go down. Obviously, you're going to have the firewall in place for the connectivity. You're going to have the AD server in place for the user authentication information. Um, you're going to be replicating those file servers in real time, syncing changes, replicating databases in real time. Um, typically, you're going to be doing a local backup. And that local backup is replicating to the cloud uh, as well. So you're doing local backups and you're replicating uh, in real time for auto failover, so should any of the resources on premise be unavailable, they would, the users would automatically be redirected to the failover site. Um, you can even take that one step further, and ha with, at least with DIN Cloud, and have desktops uh, at the cloud vendor. So should you need to fail over, not only is your data there, your applications, but your users can also run their desktops. Um, so if, you're, if your site was, um, you know, offline for whatever reason users could go home with any device anywhere anytime get to their applications and data and continue to work um, so it's option four then option five if you leverage a cloud provider such as din cloud you're going to be in a high availability environment high availability design auto failover within the local data center uh, din cloud includes you know 10 days of local backups within that same data center and we can extend that retention. We do a daily uh, snapshot. We can do you know, more frequent snapshots. Then we can also replicate that data from data center A to data center B. Not only give you a high availability a local solution, but a, a solution that's replicated to the second data center you know, for offsite recovery. So those are you know, some of the typical you know, options that customers will deploy to protect themselves from outages and be able to recover their data and their applications in a relatively short period of time. You know, one of the advantages of the cloud, um, it provides you with much more cost-effective way to do that. You know, previously it was very cost prohibitive for SMBs to be able to have off-site backup and recovery. They had to duplicate everything. It's cost prohibitive. Nowadays, with the cloud and online backups and warm site uh, DR, it's much more cost-effective, and you have much shorter recovery times. Um, so, it's the advantages of leveraging the cloud for off-site backup and recovery. And then, you know, why would you want to consider, you know, Den Cloud? Well, we support, you know, all four of the uh, BCDR options that we talked about, including the high availability option. You know, with us, there's no transfer fees. So all the bandwidth you back up to the cloud, all the bandwidth or data you, you remove from the cloud or from our cloud, uh, you'll never pay any transfer fees. We have multiple one gig connections. We provide that for free.
Um, we've got multiple options to meet any RTO, RPO, as I mentioned. We'll typically do an assessment, look at your applications, talk about RTOs and RPOs, design solutions accordingly. We will include that engineering and design assistance. We don't charge extra for that. Um, with our solution, we provide you the ability to test backups, you know, to test your backup and recovery times, RTOs and RPOs. All of our data centers are tier three plus, tier four, have all the necessary security certifications, SSAE, uh, SOC one and two, type two, ISO 27001, NIST 800-53. Uh, so we've got you know, HIPAA compliant, PCI, DSS compliant, SOX, Graham Leach, Biley, et cetera. Um, not only do we provide you the ability to recover servers very quickly, but as I mentioned, we also provide desktop as a service. We provide you desktop DR as well. Um, typically, what we'll do is provide a small pool of desktops, and so that any user can log on to you know, if, the, if a branch office or a small office is down, and then if a, in the event of a disaster and we need more desktops, we just quickly spin up more desktops and have them ready in a few moments. So, you know, with ThinCloud, you can very scale up very quickly in the event of disaster and scale down when it's not needed. Um, so, wanted to thank everybody for, you know, for their time today. What I'll do now is kind of open it up for Q&A and take a look at some of the questions. So, let me see here. Um, okay, so can you provide dynamic DNS failover and global load balancing across multiple sites? Yes, absolutely. So, the short answer is, uh, there is yes. Um, please feel free to reach out to us and contact us and we can go over, you know, the specifics. But the short answer is there is yes. Um, next question. Do your systems offer 24-hour alert notification to IT teams in the event of a disaster? Absolutely. So we'll have a run book in the event of a disaster, and you declare a disaster. You know, what do we go through? What are the who? Who do we contact? What are the processes we need to go through to recover? Um, how often? Next question. How often do you undertake verification tests, and do you offer verification reporting? Um, yes. So we'll provide you know uh, monitoring, alerting, and reporting of the backup and replication process. So if there is a problem, you'll certainly be aware of it. We have provide managed services around that as well. Um, next question, can you reconstruct an image of our data at a given point from partial backups? Um, yes, yeah, so we do incremental backups and we do uh, you know, snapshots. So depending on which technology we're using, but again, the short answer there is yes. Um, next question, what happens in the event of, the, of data corruption, ransomware or virus malware infection? Well, typically what we'll do with ransomware is we go back to the most recent backup, you know, the uninfected backup, and then recover from there. So the more frequent you take your backups, you know, the less data you're going to lose. Um, who can see my information? Next question. Do you have access controls and who's authorized to access my data? Well, with ThinCloud, we encrypt all the data in transit. We encrypt the data at rest. Um, so whoever you know, were to access your data, they couldn't read it, but we do have access controls in place and only authorized personnel have access to your data. Um, and we certainly cover that through the, you know, during the implementation process. Um, Next question, how many copies of our data will there be and over what period of time are they retained? Well, it's entirely up to the customer. We can, you know, we can keep, you know, obviously one copy on site or, you know, two copies on site, you know, the live copy, the backup copy, have a replicated copy in the cloud. We can replicate another copy to a second data center. So we've got multiple options there. But as far as time periods for retention, you know, that's entirely up to the customer as well. We've got some customers that retain data, you know, for five plus years. Um, where will our data be located? Next question. Well, we're, and we're in uh, uh, North America, USA. Today, our data centers are in Chicago or LA, so you'll always know where your data is at. Uh, we offer physical tours if you ever want to you know, physically see the facilities. These are Tier 3 Plus, Tier 4 Equinix, world-class data centers. Um, do you adhere to specific regulatory requirements, such as uh, Base, base uh, one, SOX, PCI DSS, SAS 70, et cetera. Yeah, well, I already covered that. Yeah, we have all the, all the current um, you know, certifications, as I mentioned, ISO 27001, you know, SSAE 16, SOC 1 and 2, which is a new SAS 70 uh, type 2 regulation, um, you know, NIST and, and others. Um, so, again, thanks, everyone, for their time. That's all the questions that I have right now. Please feel free to reach out to us. My name is Mark Gerke. I can be reached you know, with my contact information on the screen, 424-286-2312. Um, thanks again. Look forward to talking to you. Take care.